Um, on the second question, um, basically what, what we are seeing is there is a there is a push back to the core. Everybody's being told, go back to your core, focus on what you were doing yesterday, all the things that you were having fun with, exper experimenting, trying new things, new programs, well, this is not the time to get cut. And so how does the innovation manager, whether it's the CEO himself, or a person who's been instructed to be the chief innovation officer, drive innovation in an organization, how do you keep focused on driving innovation while there are all these other things that are becoming more of a priority. So why don't we start on this, this time we'll start with um, Ron, you want to start with what to laugh all the way around the chips and cars. Okay, I think I think in in this situation uh, what's really critical is that innovation has not been positioned this way in the past. It has to be a, it has to be positioned to serve a broader constituency in the company, on the board, on the management team. It can't just be about your products and your services. It can't just be about new businesses and new revenues. It also has to be about process innovation and breakthrough cost reduction and things that are really going to address the priorities of today as well as the priorities of tomorrow. Because there's no future without a present and there's no present without a future. So we have to be able to put <coughs> extra in a sense in how we manage innovation so that it is both serving the pressures to reduce costs and conserve cash and do things with other people's money at the same time as we're building the opportunity to take advantage of generating uh, new business revenue uh, as we come out on the other side. So to me that's making sure that we really make innovation something that is business innovation as opposed to just new product and new service innovation. Um, very simple answer for me. I think the right now innovation should fit with the strategic imperative of the company overall. Um, if the strategic imperative of the company is cash flow, then the innovation that drive cash flow really quickly. If the strategic innovation, uh, sorry, if the um, strategic imperative of the company is to put space between the competitors, then you've got to put space between the competitors as quickly as possible. But one thing about downturn is it is not tomorrow, it is what I can do today. And that is the only thing that should be on the board's agenda, um, uh, quite frankly. And if you're not if you're not packaging it that way, then I as a CEO wouldn't be prioritizing. I'm sorry. Steve. Can we start fight now or should we wait for the QA answer? Go ahead and start. No, I, I think um I'll agree with what Ron said. I think the first thing that I have been down here in my response was to accept the reality. I mean that those facts are mutable, that, that is what's going on. And if you bury your head in the sand and you think that innovation is going to go forward and your job has not been changed by the result of that context in the last 18 months, you're being incredibly naive. And I think you do have to step back and say, what can I contribute near term? So let's look at my portfolio and say, these are some of the low hanging fruit. They weren't as intellectually interesting. They probably didn't offer as great a market return as we think they might offer down the road. But right now, I can, I can commercialize them today. And I can be accretive to the bottom line today. So let's move those forward in that area. Then let's look at the balance of the portfolio and say, you know, there are a couple things that if I just hold off for six months, if I don't invest in that idea right now, is it really going to damage the idea in the long run? Or is it such a broad, sweeping change that six months is not going to make a big difference over time? Let's actively shelve that and let's just hold off on investing in that area. The middle ones are really where you need to apply your rigor and decide whether they can be commercialized a little bit quicker. Maybe you can de-feature some of the things you're looking to develop and introduce something a little bit lower cost earlier than in the process. Others, you have to step back and say, you know what, we just don't have the investment to do it right now. So make those hard decisions in order to keep moving the process forward on certain things. The sacrificial lambs, I love that phrase. I mean, you hate to think that there's anything in your portfolio that you're there just to get budget for. But the reality is there's probably a couple of things that are kicking around that are just doing that. So let's make sure we kill those off quickly and, and aggressively. Don't make the management to come do it to you. Do it to yourself and show you're making that contribution to align yourself with the strategy. Because otherwise, somebody's going to want you more because they'll just recognize you don't understand what's happening in the world. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Chips. Chips. So if you're talking about that thing called innovation, you're already in trouble. Because if it's something that's apart from you, forget it. It has to be part of your daily grind. It has to be part of what you normally do. That sounds like you but in fact,
fact, it, ta it takes time. So if the downturn hits you before you got into that practice, you're in trouble. But if you have steadily been building up your innovation or your habit of innovation uh, thinking, uh, then you have a better chance of keeping it going. And sort of summarizing uh, what uh, the other gentleman also referred to, I think that, again, you don't always want to refer to innovation as a strategy uh, in a cash-sensitive company. It's also about tactics. So there are short-term and there's a time factors that I think mentioned to innovation ideas. So that's one more thing that you need to do. The other thing I feel is that just as much as you think you're suffering, uh, all those people in your ecosystem are suffering too. And there's a good chance that they have the same problems that you do. And so if you have a commonality of interest, and particularly your customer, a group of people who have the same commonality of interest, your vendors or another group of people who have the same uh, strategic alignment with you in terms of uh, that market, uh, you can actually cooperate on innovation projects with these folks, uh, be to cost sharing, and therefore uh, still keep up with what you have to do, even as you cut back. And then, of course, uh, I think that the last comment I have, uh, Stephen, makes for a few seconds, is that uh, it's not only about products and processes, but also the business model. And this is, I often say that when you kind of attempt a black humor for the wrong reasons, you might end up doing the right things. And so this is a good time to overhaul and uh, re-engineer your business model, which you may have formed many, many years ago. And some parts of that may involve looking at more elbow room on your vanishing, which can be a very sensitive topic because you have partners that you may upset in the process. You have to think about it very well. Great. Thank you, Chips.